Okay guys, um, if you remember from our last video, we finished setting up the initialization of our function. So now in this video, we're going to actually start hooking up event handlers to the different elements of our advanced jQuery carousel. So the first thing, before actually we do any event handling, the f we're going to do one more thing actually. So what that will be is, if you notice this um, carousel here, there isn't any image on the left hand side here. So what we want to do actually is, take the last image after the uh, all the images in the carousel and then just make that appear on the left hand side here because we want to make it look like the carousel is sort of inside of like a circle like if you reach the end it's like the last image is just sliding to the left hand side and coming in and when you reach the first image you know likewise opposite as well so i think you understand what i mean actually so now in the code before actually as i said we are doing any event handling we're going to do one last thing we're going to take the last image and then just append that to the beginning of our carousel list of images so how we do that is we say we target the last image which is parent dot carousel item equal if you notice guy I'm having IntelliSense on the brackets um, editor right now that's because I updated my um, bracket editor from Spring 20 version 20 to Spring version 21 so as you can as I told you this um, editor isn't finished yet they're actually making it so as they're making it I'm using it so I get updates as I'm using the editor right now so it just happens to be that there's intelligence on it in this version so yeah so don't be surprised <laughs> it's the same editor that I'm using okay so we're targeting the last image so we say we're targeting in the list of images here parent.carousel item we want to target the image which is equal to the image with the index of the last one so how we get the index of the last image we say parent dot carousel item so the length of all the images minus one will give you the index of the last image so dot length minus one dot so now that we've got the last image we're going to insert it before the image which has an index of zero so how we do that is we say dot insert before and then we target the image with the index of zero which is the first one so we want to take the last image and append it to the beginning of the list of images so if we, we target the first one we say parent dot carousel item dot equal zero okay that should be fine so let's go back to our browser and then refresh and see what's happened so yeah that seems okay so as you can see this was the first image in the list and now we've appended the first the last image to the beginning of the first but this actually isn't exactly the only thing that we want so now what we wanted is for this image you can see here to actually be on this left hand side here so this first image that was there we wanted actually that one to be the active one in the middle here so we wanted this to be pushed to the left and how we do that is now we actually make sure that when the plugin first loads it actually pushes the whole carousel wrapper to the left just once that actually you will notice it as a user but that will happen when the carousel first loads so we're going to do that by actually sliding the carousel to the left once when it loads so let's go back to our editor and let's try to do that so we actually don't have any function we actually handle sliding our carousel to the left one so we'll actually just call it assuming that we have it we'll go later and write that function actually so we say parent remember we just assuming we have it there's no function that actually does that sliding so we're actually going to call it slide left so we say slide left so assuming we have a slide left function that actually slides our carousel to the left so if you notice guys we when we slide it to the left there will be a pause so we want to avoid that pause because we want we don't want the user to see that this when the image when the carousel loads that it's actually being slided to the left on first load we actually want to make sure that the user thinks that that's how it is by default so the way we can do that is make sure that there isn't any delay so if you remember the wait time which actually we did pass let me show you where that is yeah 
So if you see when we were calling our function for our carousel, when we were initializing our function, we did pass in a parameter here called wait time. So this wait time is by default whatever we pass in. So in this case, two seconds, which is 2000 milliseconds. So we want to override that just before we're calling this slide left because we want it to actually be instantaneous, like not have any delay so the user won't see it flicking once the plugin just loads at the first time. So just at this instance, we're going to set it to zero and then set it back to its, its initial value. So we store the value that we actually have there because we need it to have that later. So we say var original wait time equals to parent dot wait time. So now that we've stored the wait time that we have, we're going to actually take whatever value is inside this wait time has been stored in this variable. So now we're going to set this temporarily to zero. So we say parent dot wait time equal to zero. So now that we set it to zero, we can now call our slide left function, which will actually work instantly without any delay because now the wait time has been set to zero. So after we've set, we've called that slide func slide left function here, we want to set the wait time back to what it was before. So since we had the initial value of the wait time in original wait time variable, we're going to say set it back to its default value. So we say parent dot wait time. Ain't that beautiful? I love IntelliSense or auto completion, whatever you call it. <laughs> All right, cool. So we say parent dot wait time equals to original wait time. Okay, so now that's fine. 